Heavenly Father, we were glad when the voice came to us and said to us, Go to the house of the Lord and worship the great God of the universe in spirit and in truth. We have now come before you, Lord, with humble hearts, bowing low down our knees in worship and adoration to you. Forgive us of our sins, we pray thee. Accept our worship and grace our presence with your Holy Spirit and Holy Shekinah glory, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.
Have you ever tried to measure just one sin? Seeking forgiveness when your heart knows within our God will not judge us on how big or how small he looks for Calvary's blood to cover it all. Oh, the blood, the blood. Love has no boundaries Since death paid in full Jesus knew in the beginning That man would surely fall I'm glad the Savior's precious blood covered to imagine how this miracle took place it was love beyond all measures our God's amazing grace sometimes when we're weary we might stumble and fall but just one drop of his precious blood it covers it all oh the blood the blood it covers it all love has no boundaries since death Jesus knew in the beginning that man would surely fall. I'm glad the Savior's precious blood covered it all. Jesus knew. Savior's precious blood. Yes, it was His precious blood. Covered it all. Covered it all. Thank you, Sister Alyssa Walton for the song of meditation to prepare our hearts for the message that the Lord has laid on my heart to share with you on communion day. We have come to commune with the Lord. It is a special communication a special service because in our communication with God today we will be washing each other's feet the ordinance of humility and we will be eating the emblem of Christ's broken body the bread and we will be drinking the emblem of his spilt blood on Calvary's cross. The wine that was just sung about the blood that covers it all. Because without the shedding of blood, there could be no forgiveness of sins. 
the Lord has laid on my heart the 15th chapter of the gospel according to Luke. Luke chapter 15. This passage is a familiar passage because in it generally you will hear sermons on the lost coin or the lost sheep or the lost son, the prodigal son. But today you will hear a different sermon from the 15th chapter of the, of the book of Luke. I direct you to the first two verses which were not spoken by Jesus from verse 4 onward of this chapter all the writings came from the lips of Jesus but the first two verses did not come from the lips of Jesus. And the first two verses says, Then all the tax collectors, the sinners drew near to him, to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, this man receives sinners and heats with them. I have entitled the message, The Man Who Receives Sinners. The Man Who Receives Sinners. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, Come now in this place. Open the hearts of each worshiper and speak through your anointed servant now the message you would have your people to hear. And bless us, we pray, in Jesus' name. This man receives sinners. The man who receives sinners. The Pharisees and scribes were Christ's greatest enemies. They sought occasion to accuse Jesus of being a false prophet, one not sent from God. The Pharisees were filled with spiritual pride and paraded it at the street corners and in the marketplaces and in the temple. The Bible says, then and when you pray, Jesus speaking, you shall not be like the hypocrites, referring to the scribes and the Pharisees. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. To the Pharisees and the scribes, it was a disgrace to come in contact with what they called sinners. When they saw Jesus, surrounded 
and in the company of tax collectors and publicans, they sought to make him out to be a false teacher because he was in the company of sinners. Recorded in the text, I repeat. And the Pharisees, then all the tax collectors and the sinners, drew near to Jesus to hear him. While the righteous scribes and Pharisees stood at a distance, the sinners saw themselves needing Jesus. The scripture says that they came close to him. They touched him. They surrounded him. And when the, the Pharisees and scribes saw this, the, the scripture says that they murmured. They were upset. They were vexed with righteous indignation. Oh, could a man who called himself a prophet one sent from God mingled with sinners. Wow. The attitude displayed by the so-called religious leaders in Israel revealed that they were blind to both the plan of salvation and also the mission of God. Because God had called them out of darkness. He, he chose Israel not because they were mightier than any other nation. But he called them to be light bearers. But the leaders were like blind leaders of the blind. Jesus says, and if the blind leads the blind, both will fall into a ditch. In Matthew chapter 15 and verse 14, Jesus says that the Son of Man did not come to call the righteous. The Pharisees saw themselves as being righteous. And so they stood afar while the sinners saw themselves in need of Jesus. And so they came close. What a difference. What a difference. Jesus says that the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. Which means that Jesus came for sinners. And if you are a sinner, if I am a sinner, it means that Jesus came for me and he came for you. Our text today also shows that it is possible to have the form of truth. Yet we are totally ignorant of the mission of the church. can be in the church for many years we can say that we know the truth but we need to understand the mission of the truth and that is to share Jesus with those who are in sin listen, listen carefully listen carefully, I'm going somewhere you see the statement by the scribes and the Pharisees. This man receives sinners was intended to be a taunt, a stigma that would cause the people to reject the ministry of Jesus. The statement was a derogatory statement. 
to turn the people away from Jesus saying that if Christ were the Messiah, if Christ were the Savior, then Christ would not have been associating with sinners. But listen to me. Unwittingly, they were expressing the very heart of Christ's mission. They were expressing the mission of Christ. They were expressing what Christ came to do. They did not even realize that what they were doing instead of stopping the progress of Christ's mission they were advancing the cause of the Lord Amen. sometimes we have to be careful you know sometimes we are trying to stop God's work from from going forward and what we are doing instead of stopping the work we are advancing the cause of the Lord Amen. that is exactly what they were doing because when they said it they believed that the tax collectors and the publicans who were considered to be chief of sinners would have retreated. Instead of retreating, these sinners came a little closer. They came a little closer. They followed Jesus even more. Because they needed a touch from Jesus. Jesus says, for I have come not to call the righteous, but I have come, Jesus says, to call sinners to repentance. Jesus came to call me to repentance. Jesus came to call you to repentance. When Paul experienced repentance and conversion, Paul says, I am a sinner. And I am not only a sinner, I am chief of sinners. I want to take it a little further. I was a murderer. I was a nobody. But when the Lord called me and, and turned me around, I became a somebody. Amen. And of that I am grateful. I am, I am chief of sinners. I will not compare myself with others. I am just thankful that Jesus called me. And Jesus transformed me. The angel said to Mary and Joseph, you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people. Not in their sins, the Bible says, but Jesus will save his people from their sins. He will be called Jesus, for he will be savior. This man receives sinners. Let us look at the implication of the statement, the derogatory statement made by the Pharisees and the scribes. Let us examine the statement carefully. This man receives sinners. Since all men, that is inclusive of every man that is born on this earth. And every man who will be born on this earth before Jesus comes. Since all men have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. And since sins and since sin has brought all men under condemnation, it becomes an expression of God's love to invite sinners to come to Him through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The scripture tells us in John 3:60, for God so loved the world that He Gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but shall have everlasting life. 
For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. But that the world through him might be saved. Thanks be to God for Jesus. The man who receives sinners. What would poor sinners like you and me do with our sins? If we could not come to Jesus and obtain pardon and forgiveness. What? Sometimes we are so burdened down. That we do not know where to turn or who to turn to. David also faced that dilemma. And the scripture tells us when he did not know where to turn or who to turn to. He said I will lift up my eyes unto the hill. From whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. Who makes heaven and earth. Sometimes brethren we do not know where to turn or who to turn to. But thanks be to God that we can turn to Jesus. The author and the finisher of our faith. The scripture tells us that if we confess our sins that he is faithful. And he is just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us. The scripture tells us from all unrighteousness. That is the God. That we serve. We would be lost. We would die without all. Jesus is the Lamb of God. And when John saw him at his baptism. Jesus said he takes away the sins of the world. No matter what your sin uh, have been. Uh, and what you have done in the past. The Bible tells us that when Jesus takes our sins. He forgives us of our sins. He washed us. He cleansed us. He justifies us. And he clothed us in his righteousness. We are seen as if we have never sinned before. My God receives sinners. The man who receives sinners is Jesus. Who is this man who receives sinners? The Bible calls him Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. The Bible calls him Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is our peace. The Bible calls him Jehovah Nissi. The Lord is our banner. The Bible calls him Jehovah Rapha. The Lord who is. He's our sin bearer. He's our sin conqueror. He is our sin deliverer. His name shall be called Emmanuel. Because he shall save his people from their sins. The Bible tells us. Amen. Oh this man who receives sinners. His name is Jesus. Oh, Isaiah calls him wonderful. Isaiah says the mighty God, the everlasting father, the mighty prince of peace. Isaiah says that he was bruised for our iniquity. He was chastised for our sins. But he was led like a lamb to the slaughter. Yet... He opened not his mouth because he went there for you and me. He is our sin bearer. He's Jesus, the man who receives sinners. Oh, my brothers and sisters in Christ, there are conditions and blessings of Christ receiving sinners. I repeat that quickly. There are conditions and blessings for Christ who receives sinners. The condition, the basic condition is for sinners to come and confess their sins to Jesus. That is indeed a blessing. The Bible says that he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The gospel prophet Isaiah says, come let us reason together. Though your sins are like scarlet they shall be as white as snow and though they be red like crimson they shall be like wool." Oh, there are conditions and blessings when we come to Jesus and confess our sins. The Bible tells us that Jesus forgives us of our sins, washes us clean, and he makes us whole. The second conditions and blessings of our sin is to make restitution as far, as far as it is possible. It is in your own power. The Bible tells us as a, of a little short man by the name of Zacchaeus. He made rest, restitution. The Bible says that he heard about Jesus. And Jesus was traveling through the towns. Uh, through the town. And he was heading to Zacchaeus' house. And, and Zacchaeus did not even know. 
But the scripture tells us that Zacchaeus wanted to meet Jesus because he considered himself as a sinner. The text tells us in the opening verse that then all the tax collectors, he was a tax collector. And the scriptures say that among sinners during Jesus' time, the greatest of all the sinners were those who collected tax. Because when they went to the people to collect tax, they would charge the people more than what was to be paid. And they would pocket the rest. And so tax collectors during the time of Jesus were rich men. They, they knew that they were thieves. So the Pharisees said, how could Jesus associate himself with these thieves? When birds of a feather tend to flock together. And if you show me your friends, I can tell you who you are. Jesus is in this company. And so chances are, the question the character of Christ. How oh, could a man of yours stack you? Walk with thieves. But this tax collector by the name of Zacchaeus also heard about Jesus, the man who receives sinners. He was so short that he, he could not get a one on one with Jesus. And so the scripture says that he climbed a tree. Christ had to pass by that tree. When he saw Jesus, Jesus said, before you open your mouth, Zacchaeus, come down. Because salvation has come to your house today. I am heading home with you. He was so happy for that invitation that the scripture says, Zacchaeus said, Lord, look. I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by, foul, by false accusation, I will restore it fourfold. I will make restitution. I will go back. I will make wrongs right with others. And then I'm going to make it right with you, God. Because I need to be forgiven. Because you're a man who receives sinners. Oh, oh, my brothers and sisters in Christ, when Jesus receives you as a sinner, the word to you and to me today is go thy way and sin no more. Such was the woman who was caught in the very act of adultery who was brought to Jesus. Uh, the Bible says that she was cast down at Jesus' feet and the hypocritical scribes and Pharisees said, we want to know what Jesus is going to do now because the law of Moses said that this woman should be stoned to death. But not only this woman should be stoned to death, the man should be stoned to death too. Where is the man? Could not be found because they tried to entrap Jesus. But the scripture tells us that Jesus did not answer them. He knelt down and he wrote in the ground. The Bible did not say what Jesus write. But there are many Bible scholars who believe that he wrote the sins of those who were standing around. And they stood around him, a fornicator. He wrote fornicators and rocks fell. And if there was a thief standing there or thieves, when he wrote thief in the ground, rocks fell. But I want you to know, brothers and sisters in Christ, when he wrote adultery, a whole lot of rocks fell. As many had, who had come to condemn this woman and to destroy her were themselves committing the act of adultery. When Jesus was finished writing in the ground, the scripture says that when the woman lift up, lifted up her head and, and looked around, Jesus said, where are your accusers? She said, Lord, I can find no one. 
And Jesus said, I have forgiven you of your past. Go thy way and sin no more. Amen. The scripture tells us that it was this woman who anointed Christ for his burial at Simon's feast. When she broke an expensive bottle of perfume and anointed the feet of Jesus and with her ear, she tried his feet to show her appreciation. For what Christ had done for her, the man who receives sinners. Amen. Bible scholars will tell you that this woman was the last to leave the cross at the crucifixion of Christ when he bowed his head and declared that it was finished. Mary Magdalene. This man receives sinners there are conditions and blessings the blessing God says that him that comes to me I will in no wise cast out come on to me says all who who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest take my yoke upon me and learn of me for I am gentle and humble in our heart and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. It is the heavenly blessings when we come to Jesus with our sins. He will not cast us away. He receives sinners. He is the man who receives sinners. It is an invitation for us as sinners to come to him. Something to do. Come unto me. Something to leave. He says, your burden of sin. Something to receive, rest of salvation. Something to learn. He said, take and learn of me. My yoke is easy. And my burden is like something to learn, to know God and his power of his resurrection. Something to find. He says that you will find rest for your soul. Amen. Oh, that peace that passeth all understanding only comes from Jesus. When you know that you have surrendered everything to the Lord, you have confessed your sins, and as a songwriter says, there is nothing between you and your Savior. Oh, my brothers and sisters in Christ, Christ receives sinners. And I standing here is a personal testimony that Christ, Christ, receives sinners. God bless you. Chief of sinners, oh I be, Jesus shed his blood for me. Sing the second stanza, shall we bow heads? Or Heavenly Father, I am chief of sinners. The Apostle Paul said it, but that can be applied to my life. And I know, Lord, for all of us, we are sinners standing in need of forgiveness. So, oh Lord, we have come to you today and we ask you to forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Heavenly Father. Make us holy right now so that as we wash each other's feet, we will wash in love and humility. And as we return to eat the emblem of your broken body and the emblem of your spilled blood, that truly we will eat and drink worthily and we will receive a special blessing from you today. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for Jesus who was willing to die to make this possible. Now help us, Lord, to keep our eyes on Jesus. 
help us to look full in his wonderful face so that the things of this world will continue to go strangely dim in the light of his glory and his grace.